three. This is Piddlewick Yard, and it's on the floor in my room because I noticed the other day when I was running it outside there was a, an electrical problem on this lane. Now it was two things. It was a drive joint underneath because it's been outside in a storage container. Sometimes the water and moisture and things get to these models and you have to keep the track clean but one of the joints, one of the connections was dry so I soldered it and that's fixed it. I've noticed though with heavier locomotives such as the Q1 when it goes over a joint here it sometimes stops. Now I use ballasted foam on this model GM200 and that has a cushioning effect um, I can actually push down on the track and it does move which m means normally that's a very good thing it, it gives you smooth running and it helps the running of the layout also keeps things very quiet using this ballasted foam it's a really quiet layout this one but it also means that if you've got a poor joint it will push down on that joint and it might break the joint and that was what was happening I noticed the train kept stopping on the joint and I got it, it to simulate that for by letting it run further down the track and then pushing down on the joint and sure enough it would stop so I know I was breaking the electrical connection there because the power input is here so I've got a knife now the way I've glued my track down to the ballasted foam is very simple I use contact adhesive and I only lightly tack it in a few places and it makes it easy to pull the track up and replace it so points are easy to replace and what I'm going to do now is just change this fish plate for a new one well not that just that fish plate but that fish plate too and that should cure the electrical connections here and while I'm at it I'm going to do this one as well because Every now and again, now I'm not sure if this one's playing up or not, so I'm going to change it anyhow. So Piddlewick Yard has been in operation now for three years. And this is the first time I've had to pull up a piece of track. As you can see, the ballasted foam is still down there. And all I need to do is just put some contact adhesive. You can see the sort of areas here where I've done it in the past. Just a few pieces of glue and then I'll just put it straight back where it came from and then it'll be running I don't have to wait for it to dry even it's a really simple and effective and quiet and good way of ballasting track I think it gives you an automatic shoulder it is expensive though that's the only downside but if you've got a small out like this you might be able to do it all with one box ballasted foam and perhaps two at the most so 20 to 40 pound is what it might cost you so there we go I'm going to see if I can improve the running of Piddlewick Yard apart from that though the lamp's doing really well everything runs nicely I'm really pleased with this model the moving mine is fully 100% reliable it's run for six hours it's fully automatic that one I just leave it and it does it <laughs> just runs itself and with this one, what I can do is I can operate the points during operation and get different locomotives to run backwards and forwards because the power input is here before this set of points. So depending how these points are arranged, different analog tracks are powered up. Okay, let's fix it. <coughs> So I'm pulling these fish plates off with pliers. Now I'm going to throw these away. I've got a new fish plate to add here. There, I'm trying to put it on very carefully. There you go. There's other engineering going on elsewhere in the house, so we can hear noises. 
And in a moment I'll push those together. And you can also clean up the rails using either a little tool such as a screwdriver or a piece of sandpaper just to make sure that this joint is really clean but that's going on so well I know that's fine fish plates come in pairs so I'll just snap them apart, you can cut them apart if you end up with a little lip of metal that might impede it going on to the rail nicely so look out for that put it on this one it does want to go on so then I use my pliers I'm going to do it that way do it carefully nice and tightly I'll pull this one off gone there Now you've got to be really careful when you're putting these on. This is a tight fit which is great electrically. That's a good connection now. You can put a little solder on there if you really want to with a problem joint but I prefer not to. I never have done that. I just know people that have but then it's really difficult if ever you want to change things or take things apart. There is the other side. I'll put another fish plate on there. gently pull it on now be careful because if you slide it and you miss you're gonna shove it into your thumb and that is not recommended so just do these things carefully let's never do go on the track oh that one come off nicely Perhaps that's why there's a poor joint just going to clean this up And although really the tightness of the new fish plate should help it, they squeeze on so tight. That's the problem if you reuse fish plates, they get loose and then you have poor electrical connections. So, for the cost of fish plates, I would always recommend just replacing them. Make sure that they are lined up. Wiggle it on. That's perfect. Feel it with your fingers like that. You'll feel straight away if it's smooth or not. That's perfect. Now, of course, this is the difficult part. This is the final joint, and I need to separate them, pull them together without buckling the track. Now, I've got some flexibility further on down this end of the line and that's why I've released a lot of the track, two sections so I can now pull these up and hook it in without doing too much damage I hope it's difficult, I'm trying not to obscure the camera either but at the same time do what I need to do just go very gently now it's in Wiggle them tight, get them together, that is nice. Because it's all unballasted foam, of course, I can pull it in and I've now got a nice tight join and that's smooth again. So perfect, that should now run nicely. Now I need to just put blobs of glue under here and glue it down. And you can run trains in five minutes. So I've got some contact adhesive. i use a flat bladed screwdriver for this. And I'll just put blobs of glue at various points under the track. Now, I don't want to use too much, but it has to be enough. And of course, this is a stringy glue, 
and so I'm going to get parts of the stringiness over the track. So I will give the track a clean after with either surgical spirit or a very mild abrasive such as very mild wet and dry paper or sandpaper but you can use a track rubber, I just don't <laughs> never have, uh, I just find it easier to use cheaper materials it's up to you right, that's put some glue down and push it down nicely and that is now reseated and the proof of the pudding is in the eating and now to you need to run a train and make sure it's smooth, it feels smooth to me clean your tools of course if you look after your tools, your tools will look after you so how do I prefer to clean track? I use surgical spray. I have a little bottle of it here you can buy it very cheaply from a chemist and this was recommended to me by a local model shop and it's a cheap way of getting cleaning fluid I'll spray it onto a piece of flannel not tissue because the tissue will fall apart and you get that all over your track now I'll just run it down the tracks and that will pick up dirt it's not too dirty this because we have just cleaned it this morning anyhow but it does oxidize pretty much straight away so surgical spray I recommend it's a non-abrasive way of cleaning your rails now you can also use a very mild sandpaper or wet and dry but some people prefer not to they say this isn't good because it puts little cuts into the rails and then that attracts dirt into the rails I don't find that happens at all I find this is a quick and easy way of cleaning the rails but I only do it on certain tracks I've only done it on Piddlewick Yard and done moving mine and certain other layouts and mine other layouts I only ever use cleaning fluids, non-abrasive, so I don't even use track rubbers because I consider those abrasive and it's personal choice but for me I prefer with certain tracks to keep them absolutely non-abrased and completely pristine just fluid cleaning and if you keep doing that every time you use the track it's good practice it keeps things running nicely also for the locos I spray a bit of surgical spirit onto a cotton bud and you can see on this cotton bud or q-tip uh, where it's got some dirt on it where well, I've used it before and I just literally clean the wheels like that touch a battery on an analog model you can touch a battery spin the wheels a quarter of a turn or half a turn and then just clean the other half or you can put it on the track and just spin it a quarter of a turn Clean it four times, two times, however many you need to, and that will keep the wheels clean on your loco as well. Again, a non-abrasive system. One other tip is good to clean the inner surface of the rail as well as the upper surface. So here is the Q1 going over the problematic area of track. And it's fine. And 15 20 minutes and it's done. Could have done it in 10 minutes if I wasn't filming a video. So it's a very easy way to correct a poor joint or a piece of dodgy track. Look along the track, make sure it's still flat and smooth. Yeah, it looks good. The train's running lovely now. So good. Good work yard is 100% again.
Just to finish off, I've added a sexy lady to my scene. She was a present, so I've added one of the knock sexy ladies. It was about 